Back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another comprehensive lead guitar tutorial. In today's session, we're going to be putting our cage system to work as we find the five different positions of our A minor and A major chords across the fretboard. We're also going to be learning the corresponding minor pentatonic positions. So five different positions of the minor pentatonic scale in the key of A and also some licks that go along with them. I got all the tabs available for you at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. There you can find a complete study guide to help you along through your study. Now, let's get started. Okay, close look at the fretboard. Getting started breaking down the five positions of the A minor and A major chords, and also the five positions of the minor pentatonic scale, again, in A minor. We're getting started with the C position. I'm gonna start off showing you uh, the two chords, then I'll break down the scale, and also a lick that uses that scale. Okay, so I'm assuming that all of you already know how to play the common open position of the A minor chord. Okay, also called A position. And you probably also know it in its common barred form, also called E position. This is the C position. It's gonna look and sound like this. I got my pinky on the 12th fret of the A string, playing the root. Then my middle finger is here on the 10th fret of the D string. That's the minor third. It's what makes it a minor chord. I have my ring finger, the third finger, on the B string, 10th fret. And then I also have the, um, the pointer finger on the G string, 9th fret. So this is the root or the 1, the flat at 3rd, uh, this right here is the 5, and then this right here is another root. So this position of the A minor chord is very uncommon, but I do want you to kind of recognize that your pentatonic scale is going to wrap around this chord position. It's going to surround it. And also, you might want to just hold on to this kind of shape right here when you're kind of throwing licks together. It's a great way to throw in some double stops or just to kind of throw in a chord tone and slide away as you fill in the gaps between your licks. Now this is the major form of that. It's gonna look exactly like a C chord, but barred. So I have the 12th fret of the uh, A string, that's the root. I've got the major third on the 11th fret of the D string. My middle finger is playing the root again on the B string, 10th fret. And then I'm barring across the 9th fret and that's where I'm gonna find the five. All the way to the high E string for an A major chord in C position. Okay, now that you've learned the C position of the A minor and A major chords, let's learn the minor pentatonic scale in that position as well. It's gonna look and sound like this. And finding my root there on the A string 12th fret. Okay, so we're gonna have 10, 12 on the E string, A string, and the D string. 9, 12 on the G string. Then we're gonna have 10, 13 on the B string. And 10, 12 on the high E. Put all that together, we have. This is a position that Eric Clapton would spend a lot of time jamming in. Okay, so that is the A minor pentatonic scale in C position. Let's learn a lick that utilizes that pattern. It's gonna sound like this. A short phrase. Utilizing some bends, some hammers, some pull-offs. Real basic, we're going 10 up to 12, and then back to 10. But we're gonna hammer and pull. I'll grab the uh, 13th fret of the B string and bend that slightly, then go back to the 10th fret high E. Then I'll go back to 13 on the B, 10th fret of the B string, I might pull off that, 12th fret G, and then back to the 10th fret of the B string.
Now that 12th fret of the G string, I might bend that as well. For a very cool kind of Eric Clapton, maybe a little bit of Jimmy Page in their style lick. Okay, now moving on to section 2A of this lesson. The A position of our minor and major chords and minor pentatonic scale. This is the lower octave. Next, I'm gonna show you uh, in section 2B, the upper octave, okay? I wanted to kind of show both of these because it's played a little bit differently. In the lower octave, we use open strings. Okay, so first, let's look at the minor chord shape here. I'm sure you all know this. The A minor chord. Also in this position, we have the A major chord. Surrounding these chord shapes, we have the minor pentatonic scale. In the open position, it sounds like this. And then finding my root there on the open A string. Okay, breaking that down, starting with the low E string, we have 0, 3. The A string, 0, 3. The D string, 0, 2. The G string, 0, 2. The B string, 1, 3. And then on the high E string, 0, 3. Okay, and a useful lick in that position is gonna look and sound like this. Okay, so the high E string open, the first fret of the B string bent, and then to the G string, second fret. That's the first part of this lick. Kind of a cool look in itself. But we're gonna pull off that second fret of the G string. Then go to the second fret of the D. Zero two on the G. Then back to that B string first fret. Bend it a little bit before finding the root on the G string second fret. That's your A note. Put a little bit of syncopation into that. It's gonna sound very cool, very bluesy. Okay, now moving on to section 2B of this lesson. It's the A position, but up an octave. We're gonna have the same exact chord shapes, major and minor, but they're gonna be barred. So the minor chord shape, we bar the 12th fret, A string to high E, then we set up that A minor chord shape with our remaining fingers. 14th fret D, 14th fret G, and 13th fret B. I'm always picturing these chord shapes whenever I'm jamming. It's a really helpful guide. And I can turn this into a major chord by either setting up an A shape. It's a little tight up there on that 14th fret, so I might just do a double bar. My ring finger can hold down three strings, D, G, and B. I'll just forget about the high E string and let that be muted. So, A minor, A major. Okay, and surrounding those chord shapes, we're going to have the same thing that we played down here. But all of the open strings are going to become 12th frets. This is one of the most useful positions of the uh, minor pentatonic scale. I would say it's the second most useful position next to the E position, which we'll get to later. So that was 12 to 15, 12 to 15. 12 to 14, 12 to 14, 13 to 15. And then we're gonna have 12 to 15 again on the high E string. All right, a very, very important position of that A minor pentatonic scale, the A position. Now let's learn how to play that exact same lick but up here, 
in the octave. Okay, so I'm gonna begin by playing the high E string 12th fret, the 13th fret of the B string with a bend, then I'm gonna go to the G string, uh, 14th fret. Pull off that note to the 12th fret, then go to the 14th fret of the D string. Notice how my right hand here, I'm using hybrid picking, popping that high E string. Then it's all pick. Then I'm gonna go to the 12th fret of the G string, go up a whole step to the 14th fret, and then I'm gonna play the 13th fret of the B string, nice and short with a little bend, and resolve back on the 14th fret of the G string. That's an A note. Okay, so you put all that together, we have. A very, very classic lick. Okay, great work everybody. You have the C position down for the A minor and major chords, you got the scale position down, and you also have these things down in the A position in two different octaves. Now we're moving into section three of this lesson, the G position. Getting started with our chord shapes, we're going to have an A minor. All right, I'm not gonna be able to play this chord in two octaves just because of the position that we're in. Uh, just don't have enough fingers. But I'm gonna have my pinky on the fifth fret playing the root, my middle finger on the third fret A string playing the minor third, then I'll have my pointer finger on the D string second fret playing the five, and my pointer finger barring to the G string playing the root again. So I have one, flat third, five, one. Play that all at once, we have. This is not a very useful position of the A minor chord, but it could uh, serve you well in putting together lead lines. Okay, now, let's look at the major version of this. It's simply taking a G chord, bringing it up a whole step. G, G sharp, A. Okay, then I'm gonna bar the second fret, which might be uncomfortable. You might not all have the hand size for this. Okay, doesn't really matter. Again, this is not very useful positions for playing chords. Rather, it's, uh, it's very useful for putting together your lead lines and envisioning the scales. All right, so we have an A major chord in the G position. Now, surrounding these two chord shapes is our minor pentatonic scale. Okay, and the G position of our minor pentatonic scale in A minor is gonna sound like this. Getting back to the root there on the uh, fifth fret of the E string. Okay, so three five, three five. That series of four notes is something you might recognize as being the lower extension of your minor pentatonic scale. All right, but we're gonna take this into an entire position in itself. So we have three five, three five, two five on the D string. The G string two five. Then very simple, three to five on the B and the high E strings. So practice, practice, practice that. Start trying to blend it into the pentatonic positions that you're already comfortable with. Okay, now that we have that position of the scale, uh, once you have it memorized, really practice it, let's get another lick into our repertoire. Okay, so here's a short but very classic lick for you. Looks and sounds like this. Okay, so we're bending the G string fifth fret up, and then I'm gonna lift and kill it, basically lifting the string up, and then putting my palm over it so that way it dies out just as I reach the desired pitch. Three five on the B. Then I'm going to go back to that G string fifth fret, this time with my middle finger, lift and kill again, and then resolve on the root note, the A note on the second fret of the G string. And I love to hold that note out just a little bit longer than you might feel is necessary and then rush the rest of the notes. And that last note there, 
you notice that I did something a little bit different to it. I let the string fall between my pick and my pointer finger, and then I yanked on the string to give it a little bit more of a pop sound. That's a great technique, just something for you to carry along with you. Okay, now moving on to section four of this lesson. We're getting to the pentatonic position that everybody knows and loves. It's the E position. So starting off with our chords, we have our typical A minor bar chord. Bar in the fifth fret, my ring finger on the seventh fret A, my pinky on the seventh fret of the D string. Turning this into a major chord is as simple as putting your middle finger on the major third, the sixth fret of the G string. A major. And surrounding those chord shapes, we have the E position of the A minor pentatonic scale. Okay, I assume that most of you already know this, but let's review it anyway. We're going to have five to eight on the low E string, five to seven on the A, five seven, five seven, the B string five eight, and five eight on the high E. It's very easy to see why this is the most popular and most useful position of the minor pentatonic scale and also for its chord shapes. Everything's so easy to play and it's very symmetrical. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a lick that utilizes this position. Okay, so this lick is gonna sound like this. One more time. Real slow. Okay, grab the G string, bend it up about a whole step. Then we're gonna play five, five on the B string and high E. That's a very common way to get into a lick. You'll see Steve Ray Vaughan doing that all the time. Then a pull off from eight to five. That's your B string there. Then we're gonna grab the G string, bend it again. About a half step there. Five on the B, five on the G. Literally arpeggiating that A minor chord shape. All right, you put all that together, we have. All right, and I love bending that minor third before going back to the root there, just to add a little bit more of that bluesy sound to it. Okay, fantastic work, everybody. You have the C position, the A position in two octaves, the G position, and also the very common and super useful E position. That E position is going to be kind of the basis, that safety net for you when you're jamming and improvising. Now we're getting into another very useful position, uh, the D position. This is the position that contains what a lot of guitar players refer to as the upper extension. <laughs> of the minor pentatonic scale. But of course, you know that actually all of these extensions are just parts of a greater position of the scale. You can play the minor pentatonic scale in all 12 keys all over the fretboard. Okay, so let's get started with our chord shapes. Okay, starting off with A minor in D position, it's gonna look like this. I have the seventh fret of the D string playing the root A. My ring finger is on the ninth fret of the G, that's the five. My pinky's on the 10th fret of the B, that's the one again, another root. Then I have the minor third here on the eighth fret of the high E string. Okay, so I put all that together, and I have A minor. A lot of times when I'm jamming, I'm arpeggiating that chord shape, visualizing it, so that way I can see how my pentatonic scale lines up with it. Turning that into a major chord shape, okay, so if this is a D minor chord shape transposed to A, then we're gonna need our major shape transposed to A. Same thing, I have my pointer finger on the D string, seventh fret playing the root, but then I'm gonna have my middle and my ring fingers on the ninth fret G string and high E, and my pinky in between and up one fret on the 10th fret B string, playing that major triad. Okay, a great thing to visualize when you're jamming over top of the chord A major. All right, now surrounding 
those two chord shapes, we have yet another position of our minor pentatonic scale, the last one you need to learn. All right, our A minor pentatonic scale in D position looks and sounds like this. And I can find my root back on that fifth fret low E string. Okay, so this position is gonna start on the minor third. We're on the eighth fret, low E string, going up to the 10th fret. Then on the A string, we're gonna have seven to 10. The same thing on the D string. The G string is going to get seven to nine, part of that very famous upper extension. Then we're gonna have eight to 10 on the B string. And the same thing on the high E. Right. My playing really took off when I learned this position and learned how to mix it together. With my E position. Let's get a lick down for this. Okay, so here's a very short, very easy, kind of BB King inspired lick using that D position of the A minor pentatonic scale. Sounds like this. Sometimes I might stretch it out. Okay, so that was sliding from seven up to nine on the G string. Then we'll go to the eighth fret of the B string, walking up the scale, 10th fret. Then the eighth fret of the high E string, a nice bend, using the finger to pluck that string. And then resolving with a heavy vibrato on the 10th fret of the B string, our root A. All right, for a very cool, very bluesy minor lick. Okay, great work everybody. Today we reviewed the five caged positions for the A minor and A major chords, and also their corresponding minor pentatonic scales. Uh, some of you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed, maybe a little confused, and that's perfectly normal. I want you to know that learning this stuff took me many years, uh, and uh, I'm still revisiting it on a daily basis. Of course, you all have the ability to learn it in a much more efficient manner than I did. You have the study guide at patreon.com slash swiftlessons, and also this video to uh, use as reference. Now, just a couple of quick tips to help you get this stuff down a little bit faster. Uh, number one, spend at least a week on a given position before moving on to the next. Get some licks down in that position, and be sure to jam over backing tracks as you build your muscle memory. Uh, number two, it's very good to consider the theory. Ask yourself what notes you're playing. Find that it's the same five notes no matter what position you're playing in. A, C, D, E, and G. Then you wanna ask yourself what are the intervals that I'm playing and how are they arranged in the different positions. I wanna thank you all for checking out this lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it. I wanna thank my patrons for making this lesson possible. Hope you're enjoying the extra resources. I got many more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.